Hi Eden Gardeners and welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Christina's yard, it's my father-in-law, and we are going to be grafting fruit trees. And we're gonna go over a little bit of the principles behind fruit tree grafting. So let's go ahead. So when you go to a flower nursery or a garden center and you find those three, four, five type fruit trees, like the com combination apples or the plums or the pears, that's a grafted fruit tree where they choose a rootstock that has the beneficial properties of either vigorous growth or dwarf habit. It can also have the benefit of being more cold hardy, hardy than the other varieties that are being attached to it. Today we're going to go over how to graft your own fruit tree so you can make your own combination fruit tree for your backyard to make the most of your space and have many varieties in the space of one tree and save yourself money from buying it at the, at the garden center and spending 150 plus dollars on one tree and you can make it for probably under thirty dollars. You okay? You okay? Okay baby. Okay. When it comes to grafting fruit trees, the rule of thumb is the closer related the species are or the, the varieties are, the more likely you are to get a successful graft. So think apples with apples, pears with pears, plums with plums. Another thing to consider is choosing your own rootstock. When you're going online and purchasing rootstock or you're purchasing a fruit tree that is mentioned what kind of rootstock it's being used, it's going to tell you a lot about the growth habit and the, how vigorous the tree is. So on the screen I'm going to show you a graphic of suggested um, rootstock and what you can expect from them. Today we're using an American plum as our rootstock. So it's a very vigorous habitat and it's a rootstock that's already existing in the garden. And so we can graft right onto it here in the spring. We're gonna be using the Santa Rosa plum and we're going to be grafting an Italian plum. And it will take in, this, um, in the next couple months and then we can remove the tape and see how it took. Today, we are collecting sky on wood, first year growth branches that are pencil thick while buds are dormant. By collecting in early spring, you can ensure that the buds are tightly closed, essential for collecting sky on wood and making sure that the graft adheres properly. If the buds have already started to swell or are completely open with either leaves or flowers, it is far too late to be doing grafting. The tools you will need for a cleft graft our grafting tape or electrical tape, a sharp knife or box cutter, something to disinfect the blade like alcohol. You're going to need your sky on wood, your rootstock, and pruners. Today, Chris is demonstrating a cleft graft, which is a simple and versatile grafting technique. It can be performed late, earlier or later in the spring on established trees or new rootstock. The benefit of this is that the wood does not have to be the same diameter, and so you can use whatever you have in your yard to make your graft. It consists of the sky on wood, cut end, being whittled into a wedge as you can see. And forced into a split in the rootstock for a flush and tight contact. The graft is then secured by wrapping tightly with grafting or electrical tape and kept from drying out with a plastic bag, saran wrap, or grafting tape along the end.
We will check back in May to check on the graphs and see if they took. Well guys, that's it for this week. If you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe below and leave a comment uh, if you're interested in more grafting content, uh, maybe roses or peaches next time. And that's it for this week, guys. Have a nice week. Bye.